Are you suffering from a bulging disc and you're wondering whether or not it's going to need surgery? If you are, then hopefully this video will give you a better idea as to what direction to take. Hi everybody, my name is Will Harlow and I'm the over 50s and sciatica specialist physio here at HT Physio in Farnham. And today I'm going to be revealing the seven common signs that surgery might be needed for a bulging disc. Now, before we dive into the content of the video, if you haven't already, please hit like on the video and subscribe to the channel because then you'll be the first to hear about our new videos when they come out. And we've got loads on the way to do with bulging discs and sciatica. But now that that's been said, let's talk about a bulging disc and some of the signs that indicate it might need surgery. Now, a bulging disc is basically an injury that occurs to the discs that sit between the bones in the spine. So in your spine, you have uh, lots of bones that run all the way up and we call these vertebra. You've got 24 of those in total. And between every single one of them, we have what we call an intervertebral disc. An inter intervertebral disc is basically like a, a, a bundle of tough fibers made of what we call collagen, which house a little fluid center. Now, because of the structure of the discs and the fact they've got fluid in the middle, they're very flexible. So they're more flexible than the bones that sit between them. And this allows us basically to bend and to twist and to move our spines. But the problem is because they're so flexible and because these collagen fibers on the outside have to be able to move and withstand at least some twisting, they can develop weaknesses. And when a weakness develops, the fluid center inside the disc can start to push towards the back of the disc. And that can lead to something that's called a disc bulge. Now for most people, a disc bulge in the lumbar spine can be there and they won't even realize it's there. But if it comes out at a specific angle and it traps one of the nerves in the spine, that can cause the symptoms of sciatica, which includes pain running down the back of the leg and you might get pins and needles and numbness or weakness in the leg as well. Now the good news about bulging discs is that for most people they heal on their own or they heal with physiotherapy. So if you're doing all the right things, for most people there's no reason why that disc bulge won't get better. And we have other videos on this channel about how to ensure that happens. But for a rare few people, typically about 5% of people, maybe even less, surgery is needed to remove the bulging disc or the bulging part of the disc and to allow the symptoms to settle. Now, there's no hard and fast rule as to who needs surgery and who doesn't. The decision would always be made on a case by case basis. But there are seven signs that I personally look for that would lead to me possibly referring someone with sciatica through to a consultant for consideration as to surgery for their disc. So let's talk about what those seven signs are now. Now the first sign I look for is constant and severe pain that seems to be made worse by any movement whatsoever. Now for many people who have a bulging disc, this happens very early doors. So they'll have their injury, sometimes it starts suddenly, and they can end up with pain that's so severe they can barely move. Now, even though this is really, really unpleasant, for most people over the next couple of weeks, that starts to ease off. And they'll still have pain, but it tends to only be there some of the time in some positions and during some actions. And for those people, the problem's more manageable because they know what triggers it, they know what makes it feel better, so they can do less of the things that aggravate it and more of the things that ease it. Now contrast that with some unlucky people who have constant and very severe pain no matter what position they're in, if they're standing, if they're sitting, if they're lying down, if they're bending, if they're extending, all of these things make the pain worse. And sometimes even at rest, the pain is just terrible. So if that's happening over a period of four plus weeks, that would be an indication that this person might need to be looked at by a consultant because quite frankly, physio is just not going to help that person if any movements make it feel worse. So for those people, I'm usually skeptical that we can help and I might consider sending them first for an MRI scan and then to see a consultant. The second sign that surgery might be needed for a bulging disc is constant pain at night. 
Now the problem with persistent pain that happens during the night time is that it severely interrupts sleep. And this is a reality for many people who have bulging discs. They tend to find that their pain is a lot worse at night time and no matter what they do, they can't get comfy. Now, as with the first point, for many of these people, over time, things will settle and they'll start to get better night sleeps. But if you've been having physiotherapy and your night pain is keeping you up almost all night, that's a bad sign. <clears throat> the reason it's a bad sign is because if you can't sleep, you're not getting proper recovery, which means that the disc bulge is not going to be healing at an optimal rate and may not be healing at all. So again, if you've had more than four weeks where you're not able to sleep at all, then again, that can be a sign that a surgical opinion might be worthwhile. Now, the third and arguably the most important sign that surgery might be needed for a bulging disc is any of the symptoms of corda equina syndrome. Now, corda equina syndrome is a severe back condition which can be caused by a bulging or a herniated disc, and it's characterized by the bottom of the spinal cord being squashed by the disc. Now, the problem that happens with this is that all of the nerves that supply the bladder and the bowel and the area around the groin are right at the bottom of the spinal cord. So if the disc bulge is crushing those nerves, what happens is you lose your function in those very key areas of the body. So typically, corda equina syndrome presents as pain down both legs, and it can sometimes show up as problems with the bladder or the bowel. Sometimes it can show up as numbness around the saddle region or a combination of all of these things. Now, if someone is getting a combination of these symptoms and it's quite a new onset, I would never mess around with someone like that at all. I would send them straight for a surgical opinion because if you have corda equina syndrome, time is of the essence. You need to have uh, an intervention within probably 24 hours of those symptoms first starting in order to save those key areas of the body so you can regain your function. So if you're having those symptoms or you've noticed those symptoms come on, you definitely need to contact your medical provider and get yourself down to the emergency room as soon as you can because physiotherapy is not going to help that problem. It needs to be looked at by a surgeon. Now the fourth sign that surgery might be needed for a bulging disc is what we call profound weakness in one of the muscle groups or of the leg. Now it could be more than one of the muscle groups, but typically it's just one that is affected. And what this is, is when the bulging disc is coming out towards the back of the spine and it's touching a nerve, if it's compressing that nerve badly enough, what sometimes happens is that the fibers of the nerve that go all the way down the leg to supply the muscles can't do their job anymore. That means that the signals are not going from the brain into the nerve, down into the leg, so the muscle can no longer work. So the muscle groups we would test in the legs usually include the hip flexors, the knee extensors. We would test the muscles that lift up and push down your ankle. I often test the big toe as well, and usually the muscles that turn the ankles in and out as well. And if there is a significant weakness in any of those muscle groups, I would be very keen to get a second opinion as to whether a more urgent surgery is needed. Now, some people after an injury like this will have a bit of weakness where they just feel like the leg's not quite as strong as the other side. And when testing, there's about a 20 to 25% difference between right and left. Now, in my mind, that's not classified as severe weakness. So for those people, I would tend to try and treat it to see if I can improve it. However, everyone is different and anyone who had very significant weakness in one of the muscle groups in their legs, I would be sending them straight off for a surgical opinion to see if that nerve needs to be released um, much more quickly than I can do so or than their body can heal. So that is another sign that someone might need surgery when they have a bulging disc. Now, the fifth sign that surgery might be needed for a bulging disc is suffering for over a year with absolutely no improvement. Now, I feel very sorry for some people that I see when they come in and they've had symptoms for a long time. And many of those people on questioning, it sounds like they've been doing some of the things wrong and that's why their symptoms haven't got better. So with these people, I try and give them some advice, give them some treatment 
and for many of them the symptoms improve quite quickly. But for some people I meet, they have had the pain for over a year, they've tried lots of different things to help it, they've followed all the right advice, and it's still not getting better. Now the reason that it's not getting better is usually different for everyone, or it's a combination of things. But sometimes people are just very unlucky, and for whatever reason, in their genetics, or their job, or their lifestyle, or just the way their body's made, the problem just doesn't seem to heal. So if you've suffered for over a year and you've tried lots of different things, that could be a sign that a surgical opinion is worthwhile for that bulging disc. Now the sixth sign that surgery might be needed for a bulging disc is a similar one, and that's that they've tried a course of treatment with a sciatica specialist physio, and it's still not worked. Now there are lots of providers out there who say they can treat sciatica, but in reality, Complex cases of bulging discs usually need someone who specializes in that area to help. So if you've had treatment from a specialist and it's still not gotten any better, it makes sense to have a look at the next step rather than waste any more time. So for people who've been through a course of treatment with me, typically somewhere between eight and 12 weeks, and they've not seen any improvement, then I would be referring those people on for a second opinion and to see whether surgery is needed. Now, if you've had treatment with a provider and you weren't very impressed, maybe it didn't make it better, sometimes it is worth getting treatment with a second provider. But if you found that you got on well with the person, they did things that didn't make it any worse, but it just didn't improve, then it could be that getting a surgical opinion makes sense. And then the seventh sign that surgery might be an idea for a bulging disc is if you're unable to work. Now, when you have a bulging disc that's causing sciatica, for most people in most jobs, it's going to affect your work in some way. But for most people, they can put things in place to try and slightly modify the job so that it doesn't aggravate the bulging disc quite so much. For example, if you're a desk worker, you might find that putting a standing up desk in place really helps because lots of people with bulging discs find that sitting makes it worse. Now contrast that with if you're a lorry driver and you are driving your lorry, you're sitting all the day and you're getting vibration, which also makes bulging discs feel worse sometimes, it's very difficult to get around that. So if that is your job, you've tried all of the things that most people like me, the specialists recommend, so getting treatment, doing the right exercises and avoiding the things that make it worse, and it's still not getting better over a period of months, it might be that surgery is the only choice for you. Now, obviously it's worth getting an, uh, an opinion from your occupational health team if you work for someone else, or if you work for yourself to see what kind of modifications you can put in place first, because sometimes it's as simple as making a few slight tweaks which can reduce the irritation on the bulging disc, and that's all it needs to feel better. But if you've tried all of those things, it makes sense to get an opinion as to whether surgery can help. So those are the seven cases in which I would refer someone for a surgical opinion if they had a bulging disc. Obviously not all of those are going to be relevant for everyone. We always take um, the full picture into account when we're assessing someone with a bulging disc before we send them to a surgeon. And there's no simple, straightforward cases. It's always complex. To consider everything and you always need to take your time in making the decision as to whether or not you have surgery because you can't undo what happens in the operating room. For most people physiotherapy is enough to improve the problem. About 95% of people with a bulging disc do get better provided they do the right things, they get the right advice and they don't aggravate it in the process. So that's all from me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want more from me, you can pick up a copy of my book. It's called Thriving Beyond 50 and you can find it on Amazon using the link below this video. It's got loads more information about problems like bulging discs. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a comment below because I love reading what you thought about it. And thank you very much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you on the next one.